there's still like 10 15 seconds <laughs> okay okay cool that we need a lot one second is also important today okay so, ma'am live okay okay yeah priya just tell us when you're live yeah i'll be live now uh hello everyone the white army is blessed to have dr ramya ma'am with us as a teacher and mentor with another session of get to know glaucoma welcome to you ma'am also four students have volunteered to present a role play on glaucoma welcome to you all also we welcome to all the active members to this session with the permission of mentor ramya ma'am let's begin the session uh thank you ashna uh welcome to kunj neha priya and swati who have volunteered uh, to be the participants of today's uh, get to know glaucoma session which is the second part of uh, the continuation of what happened uh, yesterday uh, wednesday so uh, without wasting much time because uh, there's indeed lots to cover today and uh, i've requested the um, organizers to record the chat box so whatever doubts you have you can please write it up in the chat if we can clear it now we will if not then uh, we will be answering to you separately okay uh, i would like to start the session by saying things uh, uh, from the last class that is uh, number 1 uh, the drug of choice for starting uh, for glaucoma would be a prostaglandin but in india like last time i told you we would start a temolol because it's a uh, 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 you know uh, our patient had a twice a regime uh, drop and we thought it was small and it was the drug of choice uh, in that situation so when you are asked the drug of choice it's actually prostaglandins but in a country like india it is economical to start temolol because uh, the price difference between a prostaglandin and this is quite a very and uh, if, uh, also temolol is better if it is a single eye involved if both eyes involved uh, you can start a prostaglandin because the side effects of prostaglandin what are they kunj um, ma'am macular edema more than that cosmetically i mean yeah obviously uh, but the peri- periocular yeah. hollowing and the hypertrich uh, the uh, yes i like okay, so yeah very good so if we have if you are putting the drop only to a single eye it might look very uh, uh, abnormal for the patient so usually they give it when it is both both eyes are involved okay so that is one thing i would like to say second is the, that the angle recession is an open angle kind of glaucoma third uh, would be uh, the surgeries i mean the surgery we'll discuss later as uh, um, the presentation goes ahead and uh, the fourth point is the andersen's criteria which uh, neha had uh, generously replied to me on my email uh, that was the exactly correct answer that i was looking for Congra- uh, very congratulations to you and you can tell our viewers what is andersen's criteria now hello hello yes yes ma'am are you able to hear me i'm not able to make her hello yeah 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 we are uh, you are very audible okay uh, the andersen criteria has three points uh the first one is that um a non edge on the visual field um the non edge point uh we have to take three um three points out of that two of the points should have less p value less than 5% and one point should have p value of less than 1% and then the uh, the second point is character uh, the the corrected uh, pattern standard deviation p value should be less than 5% and the third is the glaucoma hemifield test should be abnormal yeah very good so there are three criteria uh, we had discussed last time the brief history uh, the visual acuity and the visual fields of this patient so in the visual fields my question to you was how will you tell that it is a glaucomatous uh, visual field so there's something called as andersen's criteria which i told we'll begin the session with that is nothing but uh, uh, what she said right now so you need not worry as to what is a non edge point what is a hemi field everything there are okay there are uh, five groups of points above the line and below the line and then that you are comparing in hemi fields so what you need to understand is there is something called as ght here which uh, will be showing you as normal normal something like that so in your field it would be written as out of normal limits or outside normal limits so that is one thing that you have to see that glaucoma hemi fields are out of normal limits and then when you see this uh the uh, three non edge points is 
you have again criteria for non edge points and the black one shows that it is less than 1% less than 0.5% like that so if you have a uh, uh, grading or color shading that way which shows uh, three points out of which uh, all are like uh, more than two are uh, less than 5% and at least one is less than 1% on two consecutive occasions so again that becomes a criteria to say that it is a glaucomatous field defect okay and also the corrected pattern standard deviation as she said should be less than 5 uh, that also is there in this graph so these three things might be asked to you so this is less like nice to know features so you need not worry if you don't understand or you have to by heart and tell uh, the thing is there are there are certain criteria for you to decide that a field is glaucomatous or not this much if you know i think that is great okay so right now uh, with our 56 year old man uh, we have done the we have asked him the brief history we already know that uh, uh, i don't have to repeat through that right no ma'am no right yeah so we can go back uh, and yeah next what do you want to do so we have finished uh, uh, asking him a brief history a visual acuity and then the visual field although there are lots of things to discuss in each heading okay visual fields itself we can talk for hours but whatever doubts you have you can actually mail us we can discuss that in detail okay yes so next what do you want to do so oh, ma'am anterior segment yes segment okay so unanimously the answer is uh, is swati there i can't hear her okay so yeah okay so uh, next uh, unanimously every one of you agrees that okay we want to do an anterior segment examination and that is by a slit lamp uh, anterior segment evaluation so let's go to that this is not the uh, patient picture i am telling you now this uh, copied from another source but then yeah it does cover a lot of things so this is how the, the anterior segment is looking like under torch light for you or under diffuse illumination so what do you think any any idea mom the vessels look congested sorry sorry vessels look congested okay very good something very mom looks edematous i mean this looks hazy or mm -hmm. uh, actually the it's the reflection that you are seeing of the light okay it's not very hazy it, the uh, glaucomatous corneal haze doesn't look that way but then okay it is clear i am telling you it is clear mm -hmm. that be the crescent sign cannot be appreciated like if we uh, i have not focused to you the anterior segment at all i mean the inside the eye at all okay i'm just telling you to look little uh, as to what can be uh, what can you correlate with the history and this picture basically i want to look, want you to look at this area people oh, in the chat can also answer yes ma'am it looks like a subconjunctival blip okay you look like are you actually seeing a blip like how do you expect a blip to look like obviously would, you guys wouldn't have seen a blip i myself didn't have hadn't seen until i came to pg so uh stitch can how? be seen over the upper very good very good claps to you very very good this is what you can see you can see a suture there can you see i don't know you uh, the the sutures that we use in ophthalmology are like 10 0 okay so it might be as thin as your hair or even thinner than that uh, under the microscope so but it does look like this you can see two uh, i mean sutures here there's a knot also over there okay so you definitely know that there's some uh, surgery and they have done something with the conjunctiva here okay so that much you know but are you able to appreciate an elevated uh, what what do you mean by a bleb just uh, general knowledge stuff not like any one of you can answer what do you expect in a bleb a fluid filled cavity okay. a fluid filled cavity i yeah. see expectations might not meet your reality right but then what do you expect you want a fluid filled cavity to be present and uh, some fluid underneath so you want it to be some uh, di uh, diffuse translucent type of uh, area underneath and a clear demarcation as to you know somewhat like that you want to look at correct na that is what you want to visualize but this patient as soon as you see him it's come like this so one thing you told clearly to me that you are seeing some sutures there correct 
and then you are you also told that it looks congested i mean uh, there are vessels anything else you want to tell i mean i don't think anything else you will be appreciating in this picture so shall we move ahead the arcus can be seen arcus and ah, very good arcus is there yeah okay so uh, yeah so for the pgs who are presenting this case you will have to literally uh, write everything okay i, I have just written lids and ednex that 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 is a work for pgs see uh, every other place where i have not described in detail you have to describe in detail so take that from me as a uh, you know as a copy um, whatever instruction so this is only uh, limiting to the case per se today so we'll uh, you have seen that the lids and adnex are normal uh, in the right eye you were seeing a flat diffuse translucent blep extending 11 to 2 o'clock uh, position superiorly above the limbus with dilated tortuous vessels over its surface with subconjunctival fibrosis obscuring the underlying details was seen this is how we describe it when we will not just say that okay there was no blood no uh, it's the art of telling what you see in a way that the examiner understands what is there so you have explained to him that it is from 11 to 2 o'clock okay so uh, if this we consider as a clock this becomes 11 and this is 2 so from this area to this area i am seeing under the slit lamp uh, i am seeing a diffuse uh, translucent and a flat bleb initially i, I was supposed to see a proper a bleb but i am seeing a flat bleb uh, on the superior limbus and there are dilated vessels over it and i can't see the sclera underneath it properly okay so that might be due to subconjunctival fibrosis and there is a grading system for uh, the pgs here so you have to know all the grading systems of the blebs uh, if anyone is there and you know of the grading systems you can put it up one of which is i have already told you here anybody knows white thing is arcus senilis the 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 one that is covering the cornea yes uh one minute this is arcus senilis okay this is arcus okay next uh yes so there are uh, we were in the bleb actually now so there are classifications there are grading systems so that's the homework for the pgs uh, also the ugs if you are too interested okay uh, what all the grading systems are there so this is how it's looking for you let me complete it uh, the cornea is clear that means there is no corneal edema per se because of the raised iop now that is what we are telling and the left eye all findings are normal let us just uh, think that way so the anterior chamber is optically clear and uh, for all the pgs you can't uh, really say normal in depth and uh, clear not like that you have to grade it uh, according to van herrick that is vh is van herrick not which is hamrage okay uh, uh, the technical term we use is vh grade 4 now uh, please tell me what do you know by uh, of van herrick's grading system or however you see an anterior chamber what what all uh, structures do you see in anterior chamber number 1 uh van herrick's grading system we uh, use it to see uh, the depth of the an anterior chamber by ca comparing it to the thickness of the cornea so if uh, so if the thickness is the same so okay. as the cornea then uh, that is like an open angle then hmm. if thickness is 1/4 to half then hmm. uh, it's uh, slightly uh, smaller like the angle is smaller hmm hmm it's 1/4 uh, then we have to do a, a gonioscopy to check further and hmm. if it's um, and if it's less than 1/4 then it's occludable yeah okay very good so there are different methods that you uh, use to assess the anterior chamber okay so there can be uh, subjective methods objective methods and there are so many other things okay what you you guys see is uh, the normal the eclipse sign that is by the torch lights what is expected of you is to put a torch light on the temporal aspect of the eye and to see whether that reflection is falling on the nasal limbus okay so even with that you can make out that the anterior chamber is normal or deep okay and uh, uh, normal or deep or shallow so you don't know whether it's deep in that in the shallow you will see something called as the eclipse sign that is the light is not reaching the nasal limbus this is under torch light okay 
then there are various other methods under the slit lamp only one of which is van herricks okay so in van herricks it's a qualitative method so you are comparing the corneal thickness so if you have if you put a slit beam of light like this okay you have a corneal reflection like this and a, a reflection in the ac so the gap between the two is your anterior chamber and the uh, slit that is forming on the cornea is the corneal thickness okay so you are comparing this uh, thickness to the gap between these two lights that you are putting okay in slit lamp you can focus one light like this and one on the cornea so you can uh, gauge the anterior chamber depth but that is qualitative so you will qualify it whether it is 1/4 half or uh, more than half or is it equal okay but there are quantitative methods as well okay there is something called as smith's method there is something uh, one more technique called as a split limbal technique which see in this van herricks you are only seeing the nasal and the temporal uh, uh, limbus you are taking your uh, slit lamp to either the nasal limbus or the temporal limbus but uh, theoretically it is that uh, the angle will be if it is supposed to be narrow it is most narrow or superiorly so that is what matters to you so that time you can use something called as a split limbal technique uh, which you can read up if you want and uh, uh, which nobody will ask you for uh, ug level it is not asked for pg definitely you have to know all this okay and uh, Uh, the other technique that i told you was the smith's method where you can actually you know uh, make the slit into this much and you have a correction factor multiply it and tell that the anterior uh, chamber is uh, 2.5 or uh, whatever mm you can actually calculate it that becomes a quantitative technique now these both are subjective there are objective methods that is by using what any idea you can objectively quantify this uh, anterior chamber is this much it too high for you i agree but if you just think in that direction it will be like super awesome topography okay very good i mean it's not topography per se but it's some investigation correct so objectively you can you have to say you have to do some investigation to uh, get this thing right okay there is something called as asoct they do or uh, ubm okay so even in as oct you can actually picture the anterior segment the oct is not done only for the retina okay there is something called as as oct which is anterior segment oct where you can actually quantify and objectively measure the anterior chamber angle and how much is the depth and all that okay so all that is just to give you an overview so the the anterior chamber was optically clear in both the eyes and it appeared to be normal okay there is no shallow anterior chamber in this person okay the iris now this is something very nice and interesting a single peripheral triangular defect measuring 2 mm in size seen superiorly at 12 o'clock position close to the limbus suggestive of a surgical iridectomy with retroillumination being positive now the main idea behind putting such things is you might uh, think sometimes when you are presenting the cataract case a uh, har bar to hum normally likhte hain what what are the features these people might be writing okay under such headings so these are certain things that we actually look for and this is how we describe okay so you are seeing a peripheral defect in the iris which is triangular in shape at 12 o'clock okay and uh, which is suggestive of so you can't really tell any time okay that this is this you always use the word suggestive of in your uh, case presentation surgical iridectomy now to say that this surgical iridectomy is correctly done is what we are saying as retroillumination positive that means if you uh, put the slit lamp directly like this okay if this is the pupil uh, this is the pupil i don't know if you are able to make out this is the pupil and this is the iris so if you just put a beam of light like this you no know, straight you are able to see the reflex from the retina that you might be able to see even photo kheechte samay also if you uh, click and somebody's eyes look red na that is actually the retinal uh, red uh, reflex okay same like that through this small hole also now this hole is also just like your pupil na? this is also a hole inside the iris so if you uh, put the slit lamp through that hole and you are able to see the red reflex matlab it is properly patent okay so it is not a failed iridectomy it is properly patent and you are able to there is aqueous movement happening 
through that uh, iridectomy okay uh, because if it was closed you couldn't see the red reflex it might have been too small or it might be occluded or something like that would have happened but if you are able to see the retro illumination that means it is patent that is what we are trying to uh, decipher by this kind of an examination then you have a pupil which is 4 mm round regular uh, reactive no uh, not regular reacting sluggishly to light with a grade 3 rapd so in for ugs it is just enough if you know about rapd for pgs please do know the grades of rapd your uh, that's a short short question for you uh, in most of the cases wherever you have rapd every examiner will ask you they have asked me also my uh, exam question was grading of rapd is to start with okay so please know about the grades of rapd any doubt you can uh, come back to that so obviously the other eye uh, whenever this uh, direct uh, reflex is not proper the indirect of the other eye will not be proper so we have a sluggish indirect reflex in the other eye okay so one more uh, finding that you see here is uh, there is a subfacia uh, in this eye what do you infer by this he's had a cataract surgery and okay so uh, but he said he is undergone one surgery hmm. there will be a They removed the cataract and put up the PCI wall and even did the prophylactic iridectomy. Okay. What about the blab then? Ma'am, uh, the iridectomy was not prophylactic. It was part of the hmm. part of the blab surgery. It was part of the drainage yeah. surgery. Yeah. Good. Okay. I agree with that. Now, what about the cataract? he had a surgery in the past history he had a surgery a few months back so that's okay so that is one surgery he is telling i have had one surgery in the eye is it possible i am asking you is the patient lying or uh, is this uh, uh, possible ma'am it is possible okay mm. uh, before um, uh, branding anybody as a liar yes we'll think what all possibilities are there although everybody lies a lens induced uh, glaucoma uh, i mean like so okay they, yeah yeah go ahead neha okay lens induced glaucoma i told you i think we discussed last time uh, the the correction would be to perform a surgery and would put him on a mannitol uh, drip or acetazolamide and then immediately post for surgery remove the lens out why do you have to do an iridectomy blab all that see this is something you are seeing you are seeing a blab Or probably a failed blab, and then you are seeing an iridectomy. So sure, sure, he has had a glaucoma surgery, and you are seeing pseudo fakia. Is it possible? Is the question? Anybody in the chat can also answer. As a part of the lens surgery, he has undergone even the glaucoma surgery. Like they okay. both are done together. Very good. What is that called as? It's done in Minto. Yeah, you have to tell me. Triad of glaucoma surgery. Yeah, it's called as a triple procedure. Okay. Triple, triple yeah, some, procedure for glaucoma. Yeah, triple procedure. Okay. Sometimes uh, you will be walking around, and the uh, the PGs or the fellows will be like, "Ah, uh, why I'll post one triple today or something like that." You are like, uh, "What is? What are they talking? Okay, what is this? What are they talking? Uh, that that means they are doing some things. Okay. So they can do a fake out trap. Okay. They can prop. Uh, they can also uh, do a combined cataract with. a glaucoma surgery this can be done okay now there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages for this procedure so if you do a trab alone then there are certain advantages also certain disadvantages when you do a fake out trab or a, a cataract with combined cataract with a trabeculectomy again there are certain advantages and disadvantages so that can be tailored to this patient what i feel i would want you to tell that he must have undergone both this for the reason that Ma'am, uh, there's one reason. Huh. And there's one reason for combining a cataract surgery with a glaucoma uh, hmm. surgery because the intraocular pressures will be lower once when you're doing a cataract surgery. So initially, yes, but uh, different surgeries. If you plan also, it will come. It will be a better option. The eye can heal better. 
uh, you are not causing too much trauma at the same time uh, although initial drop off pressures could be good but uh, there are lot of risks also to do the two surgeries in this patient basically i, I am expecting some very basic answer patient may be non compliant to come exactly exactly <laughs> we are dealing with a very non compliant patient non-com- here who would not probably agree for uh, surgeries repeated surgeries or repeated uh, visits to your place okay so the uh, one of the reasons that you can combine two surgeries is when the patient cannot come to you again and again okay that is one of the but although you can't totally rely on okay bhai he is not coming so i post everything no you can't do that you have to see so many other factors but yeah this can be one of the striking reasons for them to have done two surgeries or the triple procedure what we say uh, at a same setting okay so this can uh, uh, there are a lot of disadvantages as well so you can anybody who's interested to know in detail about this can uh, read up and if you have any doubts again we can come back and discuss this okay so basically this is all that uh, the anterior segment looks like for you so now where are we heading ma'am ma'am yeah. iris whether arytectomy was done can we see the red reflex on distant direct ophthalmoscopy also yes yes you can if you are uh, proficient enough and the uh, the arytectomy is uh, big enough okay see sometimes you do laser irodotomy that is very uh, small sometimes you can't really see it in uh, distant direct okay irytectomy oh. once you can see laser irytectomy is i think you should see in a slit lamp okay uh, with a distant direct it might be very difficult for you to pick up okay so yes. there is a, a benefit okay with this we have one more question uh, kunj uh, how do you differentiate a iris whole and an iris small uh, iris whole would be like reddish like the pupil what are the uses uh, of distant direct ophthalmoscopy in that one of it is to distinguish between an iris mole mole m o l e to a iris whole okay h o l e that means if you put a distant direct if you are seeing the red reflex coming through it it's a hole mm. on torch light everything yes. might just look black to you okay even the mole will look black even this area might look just black okay so the mole uh, through the mole you are not able to see the red reflex through the hole you can so that is one of the uh, uses of uh, distant direct uh, ophthalmoscopy regarding the surgery i would like to put it in this place only because many of you have doubts regarding surgeries okay so last time uh, uh, there was a question about uh, goniotomy trabeculotomy trabeculoplasty trabeculectomy so many names you have and uh, just going about head so in brief i would like to tell anybody any doubts anything you can just uh, put it up okay so firstly we we'll start with goniotomy okay everyone just let me know if you are in flow with what i'm saying so goniotomy is a procedure that is done for congenital glaucoma where the cornea is not clouded okay that means the cornea has to be clear for you to put a gonio lens and see the gonio see the angle structures so when you are seeing the angle structures you can identify what the trabecular meshwork is go to that place and then create an opening in the trabecular meshwork now what is the pathogenesis in a congenital glaucoma is trabeculo dysgenesis that means the trabecular meshwork is not formed properly in a child okay as, as soon as the birth okay there are many conditions for that as in field rigor and so many other anomalies and everything so the basic uh, uh, pathology is that the trabecular meshwork is not formed properly and you want to address that interno ab interno if you have red things they would have been like ab interno ab externo procedures and all that means internal through the internal area you are going and through external means through from the sclera you are going okay so if you have a lens placed on this uh, clear cornea and you are able to see the gonio structures you uh, make a uh, you know go from the one limbus to the other limbus catch hold of the uh, trabecular meshwork and try to open it up and just clear that area and come out okay and uh, there is no pathway that is created from the anterior chamber under the sclera so there is no uh, what you are going to see in this trabeculectomy that kind of procedure is not done you are just uh, you know uh, cutting off the trabecular meshwork uh, in that entire area so that uh, the whatever uh, wrong uh, the uh, extracellular matrix was there or whatever dysgenesis was there that is overcome and the filtration normally happens through the schlem's canal and then collector channels and all that that is goniotomy okay now that is done in very small infants uh, uh, under the age of 2 probably like that is what is preferred 
now uh, by the age of 2 to 3 and all uh, they might, might not have a clear cornea by the time they come to you they will always have like that bufthalmus kind of eye which is a uh, cloudy cornea blue color uh, 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 you know the picture so once if, if the cornea is so cloudy you can't really put the lens and see the gonios gonioscopy structures the whatever angle structures you can't see now what is the next best thing you can do the sclera is also very elastic in this condition okay so you really can't make a partial thickness flap and then go there and create a hole and all these things it there is something called as wound modulation that keeps happening for that you need to have a good scleral rigidity a position all that for a growing child with a, a sclera that is not that uh, uh, you know rigid enough the best procedure to do externally is you create a hole get into the schlem canal you can uh, actually visualize the schlem canal go cannulate it and then identify the trabecular uh, you know meshwork and just uh, strip it off all 360 degrees you can strip it off so that again you have not created any passage from the anterior chamber to the uh, you know subconjunctival area but you have removed off all the uh, dysgenetic uh, um, trabecular meshwork that is uh, there okay uh the that much you have cleared and uh, this is enough for a child uh, to you know overcome the situation so these are less invasive than a trabeculectomy and this give a better result in a child okay now the next question would be ma'am this is less in, less invasive and this is giving a good result in a child why not do this to the adult okay this was another uh, 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 idea okay which is a very good idea and people have tried okay there are articles where uh, they have tried certain not i wouldn't say the same procedure but similar procedures in an adult so in an adult what happens is this does not achieve that good results this procedure has uh, uh, it is shown that it doesn't achieve as much reduction that is required for an adult as is for a child okay number one second thing uh, uh, the trabeculectomy surgery would be better because uh, it's a partial thickness and then scleral rigidity it is offering a better uh, uh, re reduction of iop in an adult now third thing what would be is uh, there are certain new drugs in glaucoma can you name them the two new drugs in glaucoma which every ug should know we just have to know another list of some 11 20 drugs new ones uh, but ug Netasudil is also called as glucinase inhibitor. Glucinase Also sold under what name? No idea. Latanoprostin. Uh, okay. Ropressa. Okay. Uh, Latanoprostin Bunod is another one. What is that? It's a combination of uh, uh, nitric oxide and latanoprost. So uh, nitric oxide will uh, increase the uh trabecular mesh flow, mesh um outflow and then the prostaglandin is going to increase the uv scleral outflow so yeah. the outflow is uh, better uh, so you have uh, correct whatever you said is correct so the two names that you need to remember is ropressa and visalta okay that's what you people are telling uh, so uh, these two things basically act on what the trabecular meshwork okay that you have to know ropressa basically acts on the trabecular meshwork so it is going to change your extracellular matrix and uh, uh, cause the decre decrease in the iop now if you had done some procedure which is like trabeculotomy where the entire trabecular meshwork is stripped off and everything uh, whatever uh, uh, you know uh, remains are there that can undergo scarring okay that mm -hmm. can undergo scarring in an adult so what you have done might not give you the result the scar tissue might be formed and again it can get blocked number mm -hmm. one okay second thing you have taken you have destroyed so much of uh, trabecular meshwork okay in an adult if you are planning to use certain drugs which act on the trabecular meshwork later on that is not there yeah is it too high fi is is it no. getting too above the head no this is uh, uh, this is actually little higher stuff but just because you have asked me this question i i thought it's a requirement to tell you okay so basically what you need to know is you can't use certain drugs if you use certain procedures okay you can't really you don't want to really destroy the entire trabecular meshwork in an adult where trabecular dysgenesis is not the pathology okay mm -hmm. the pathology is something else i mean we'll discuss that later so the you don't have to subject the entire trabecular meshwork to undergo such a 
destruct uh, this thing okay also it's a minimally invasive uh, procedure so you have good procedures na in an adult which is called as minimally invasive glaucoma surgery migs okay there are certain uh, 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 stents i stent and gold uh, gold stents and all so many things are there which are coming up uh, titanium stents and all which can be used in an adult for a minimally invasive procedure the economical one the the one that we use uh, uh, on blanket is what is called as trabeculectomy that is what the video i'm going to show you today okay so i hope this clears and, maximum doubts yeah and in goniotomy and trabeculectomy we like strip off the all the uh, entire trabecular yeah, uh, yeah. The, there are uh, okay there are 90 degree ones uh, 120 degree and uh, 90 and then you have 180 and then 360 all types are there okay so it depends upon the condition and how much you want to do not for everybody is not uh, everything is not done okay so uh, you uh, uh, it is individualized to that case so if the child depending on how much it is required there is 90 degrees also okay that also can be done not like everything has to be stripped off okay that is one thing now uh, the other uh, question that was remaining was what is trabeculoplasty okay so trabeculoplasty is a laser procedure basically okay you have uh, argon lasers and selective lasers and all where uh, this is a non invasive kind of a procedure non invasive matlab it is actually targeting the trabecular mesh work only but you don't have to literally you know cut through any tissue or anything the patient uh, uh, there are certain uh, lenses that you can use and uh, direct your lasers to the trabecular mesh work what they do is uh, they uh, kind of alter this extracellular matrix of the uh, trabecular mesh work this laser it does that so it is not actually you are not giving a cut you are not doing anything but you are just altering that uh, uh, mesh work in such a way that it opens up it opens up and allows more of uh, aqueous to drain through it so i think and it is very costly affair it, it can be done in pregnant ladies who have poag or secondary open angle glaucoma but it can't be done in uh, neovascular and other very complicated glaucoma you can't do that okay so they for complicated glaucoma we prefer a gdd gdd is glaucoma drainage devices so the entire glaucoma surgery per se is a very huge thing it starts from the old surgeries okay very old surgeries to the very recent ones right now okay and the different combinations of all of that for pgs it is if you are long case is a glaucoma be rest assured the 2 3 3 4 hours you will be drilled uh, on the on the, just the surgery they can drill okay so we uh, don't think that i'll read entire glaucoma in one day don't don't uh, do such a feat okay uh, uh, put it in bits and pieces and try to tell it to your friends and all and then learn one one surgery every day so i think i'll play uh, the main surgery today that is the trabeculectomy uh, yeah what happened This flap is then made in the sclera and is dissected all the way to the clear cornea. A block of scleral tissue, part of the trabecular mesh work in the lens canal, is then removed to make a hole into the anterior chamber of the eye. As the iris may plug up this hole from the inside, a piece of the iris may be removed at this time. This is called a redecting. Scleral flap is then sutured loose in the back of the face. These sutures can be released gradually within a couple of weeks after surgery. This allows adjustment of the angles in order to achieve target pressure and to avoid the complication of having too low intraocular pressure. 
Gunjam Taiga is still back in place in her career. After surgery, aqueous humor drains the filtering area called a blend with Gunjam Taiga. Since the surgery is usually performed near the top of the eye, the blend can easily be. Okay, so uh, I think uh, this uh, the copyright is with Alila Medical Media and it's taken from uh, YouTube. This video, okay. So uh, I think the procedure was quite uh, uh, elaborative, and uh, everybody must have understood it. It will be shared with you guys, so you can go through it again and see what exactly is being done and why the idectomy is done as a part of the procedure. Okay, and why it is done always superiorly. is because uh, the uh, the upper eyelid covers it so you are not seeing another image through this iridectomy one thing okay and it is very unsightly for a patient you know to show the blep to everyone okay so uh, if it is under the eyelid it is more convenient to him or her and uh, it is very uh, safe and it is not prone to infections also so it is uh, very much protected by the upper lid so the infections are less uh, if the cosmetically it is better the iridectomy is also covered so the patient is also happy and uh, you are also at your uh, best okay so that's why it's done superiorly so if you have to plan supposedly you did not plan a cataract surgery along with it and you want to do a cataract surgery later you can do always a clear corneal incision temporarily and get the cataract out so you don't have to really touch the bleb area at all okay so if you were wondering that okay if there is a bleb up oh, how will i do the cataract surgery again you don't have to put the superior incision you can go temporarily and do the cataract surgery on a later date okay so i think uh, that should be it uh, yes so uh, the anterior segment you have seen now in this patient and uh, i think it cover most of uh, your whatever you needed next what do you want to do next fast fast mm. gonioscopy you want to do gonioscopy anybody else anything else that you uh, do not agree for gonioscopy or want to do something else uh, we can do gonioscopy okay so everybody wishes to do gonioscopy why not tonometry um uh, when you're doing tonometry and you're applying pressure on the eye there's increase and decrease pressure when the eye ball is squeezed and when it's released so that can alter the angles are you applying pressure in tonometry number 1 Okay. That, uh, that depends on which tonometer we are using. Very good. Yeah. Okay. There is variable force and variable area. There are two types of tonometers. I mean, physiologically, obviously, you have non-contact, contact, and other things, and uh, uh, applanation, indentation, and that way also. So there are so many other ways you can tell. But yeah, uh, this way, uh, majorly, you can say that uh, there are certain tonometers which have a variable force that is used to. uh you know flatten this much said amount of area of a cornea but there are also tonometers which use a uh, same force but different uh, uh, amount of cornea that is getting flattened okay so there are ways but uh, if you are using a non contact tonometer you can definitely do tonometry first non contact okay because it's a non contact procedure then you go for a contact procedure which is gonioscopy okay But don't dilate and do the tonometry. Why don't you do uh, dilate after seeing fundus? Do tonometry. This is for PGs. Most of the most of the time, you will just do gonio and uh, you will put on fundus. You will dilate the patient and then forgot to uh, to do tono, and then come and then you will be scolded by your uh, consultant. Why don't you have to do after uh, dilatation? What happens? You might miss out on what. it's an angle closure it will precipitate it na it will be more yeah okay yes. one thing uh, i'm i'm telling based on that okay you've not seen the angle right now and uh, you've not done uh, so much of uh, detailed vanerix grading also so tonometry always do before dilatation because you don't want to uh, really increase the pressure and see how much it is okay also you have to know the pressures how it varies okay in the morning in the evening what is facing all these things i think it's there in your books so you can actually read up so yeah uh, one more thing in tonometry now most of the times you might not have a non contact tonometer in your setting uh, you might have an goldman applanation attached to your slit lamp or a perkins that you use what is the main funda of using these uh, instruments 
what do you have to do before using these instruments women or sorry sanitizer oh yeah that you have to do for everything <laughs> increasingly now these days for everything you touch you have to sanitize yeah, yeah. i mean you have to stay in the cornea exactly so if you are staining uh, uh, the cornea and uh, you took the tonometer values and then you planned on doing the gonioscopy then you put the gel and some amount of stain is already there and the gel the stain everything is going to mix up and you know, first of all you can't see the gonioscopy findings easily okay for anybody it's difficult for me also it's difficult okay very very keenly we have to look for each trabecular meshwork which is fall base line which is this which is that and imagine having a stain in that okay so whatever you've done is very cumbersome very uh, uh, not nice to look at okay so don't do that do, those kind of mistakes shouldn't be done so i agree that you uh, let's assume we had a contact tonometer only so we'll do gonioscopy first what are the angle structures what are the angle structures Inside, however you want to tell uh, the iris root uh, hmm. there is uh, the ciliary body band the scleral hmm. spur trabecular hmm. meshwork and the anterior hmm. most is the uh, schwalbe's line okay so the left eye is uh, normal okay in this case so if i've started there is a iris uh, uh, ciliary body band and then you have schwalbe's i don't think you can make out okay and don't worry also if you can't make out i am telling you it's an open angle in the left eye but there are grading systems uh, what are, what grading system do you know of to grade yeah. the angle based on gonio shaffer's ma'am shaffer's grading good next please sorry uh i don't know how to pronounce it is s c h e i e ah she's yeah great she's she's grading which is exact opposite of your shaffer's okay so if shaffer tells uh, four is the wide angle the exact opposite is she is okay four is the closed angle so uh, the one way you can remember it easily is you draw the picture whatever is there in qurana four structures are seen grade 4 okay and it is open angle so cbb uh, i can see till schwalbe's line you can remember that way i can see till schwalbe's line so you will not confuse with ss as clear as per in schwalbe's line okay so just see if an open angle i can see till schwalbe's line okay so the i you need not worry cbb uh trabecular meshwork and uh, uh, scleral spur and schwalbe line and four things if you are seeing it's grade 4 40 degree between the uh, angle that is the angle between the iris and the cornea posterior part of the cornea and it is open angle this way you can remember three structures seen 30 degree and uh, grade 3 okay two structures seen 20 degree and uh, again grade 2 same way and then last would be a slit angle i think if you go back and read your books now it becomes very easier now she is just opposite of that okay wherever you have put 4 3 2 1 it is uh, uh, this way if you go again it's 1 uh, 4 3 2 1 yeah correct okay so whichever is 4 is 1 that way i hope you that is clear and one more grading system is there this is very important for pgs okay you have to know all the grading systems whichever the examiner is comfortable with you have to tell but most often most uh, uh, universally used is shaffers so you can tell that this is an open angle grade 4 according to shaffer's classification nobody will ask you but other grading systems anybody knows there's one more called as speth okay s p a e t h uh, speth uh, classification one is shees one is shaffer's these three uh, are something that you have to know then also there are other classifications for the bleb i got to tell you guys okay for pgs if you are watching uh you have to know indiana classification uh you have to know uh, uh the classifications as well that is buserberg mu fields mitchell and uh, uh, midgall and hitchings and there are so many other names so uh, don't worry uh, you guys don't have to worry about it so one more thing in this picture that i would like to say is when you're doing a gonio in a patient who has already had a peripheral iridectomy you're going to see something like this an ostium okay this is all is too for high five okay not uh, even a pg wouldn't have seen uh, ostium and all okay but i'm just telling you what you look for when you will not only look for only the structures you are going to see certain abnormalities certain blood 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 in the stem schlem's canal angle recession if it is there so many other things and what is sampaulisis line this is very favorite asked to ugs pigment, pigment glaucoma or pseudo exfoliation pigment glaucoma homework okay 
i am not yeah. going to uh, really disclose the answer here okay you have to uh, know what is some polling so all these things can be seen iris processes what is there all this can be seen in gonio that is what i mean to tell you by what is gonioscopy and in gonioscopy again you have two types okay one is uh, uh, direct and indirect gonioscopy and then indentation and non indentation so all those you can read up it's all uh, technical and it's there okay or oh, one more thing is uh, when you are uh, doing a gonio uh, you should not use too much of bright light because you are causing the meiosis then okay which might open up the angle are you getting my point these are very subtle things that you have to keep in mind especially as a pg okay if you are using a wide beam of light which is passing through the pupil the pupil will constrict once the pupil constricts it's going to pull the peripheral fiber so whatever angle was probably closed a little bit closed you are making it open so you might not get the correct uh, uh, angle grading so keep the uh, slit very narrow no, no don't let it cross the pupillary area so that your pupil is however the patient's pupil is not don't make it extra constricted okay that is one thing for the pgs uh, a subtle point so uh, this patient shows you a trabecular mesh work with an ostium so it's a patent ostium everything is fine according to the surgery but he has a paired bleb okay i'll show you that one minute yeah this is for you this is something i was telling you this is a proper probably bleb translucent bleb without any uh, tortuous vessels with a nice uh, iridectomy i think my uh, uh, this is pointing then you have a little one which is a, th a little you know bulgy area you can see and then you have almost a failing bleb where uh, you have lot of uh, vascularization you really can't see the scleral flap how the scleral flap was whether it's triangular rectangular how many sutures were put all these things if you're not able to see then it is subconjunctival fibrosis how do you prevent fibrosis is by using uh, mitomycin c or same. yeah anti metabolites okay dominates very good so you can give a lot of steroids also to uh, decrease the um, fibrosis this is something called as a tenen cyst uh, so uh, this also can happen uh, where you have a proper tenen cyst so this is for the ugs for the pgs uh, this is the indiana grading system where you have to tell the bleb height how much is the horizontal extent what is the vascularity whether it is leaking not leaking so all these things you have to tell so that uh, once you tell the grading the examiner knows how exactly the bleb is so not all examiners might come and see your patient and see how but if you have done this it gives a good impression that what you are exactly trying to tell okay and the other systems i told you more uh, more fields and user work and other things if you really want to score distinction then you have to know all of that as well okay so in our patient now where are where have we reached so you uh, the surgery was probably right so what has happened now the uh, the peripheral iridectomy was top nice you could see a bleb but uh, and uh, he's also undergone cataract and uh, even in the gonio the there was a patent ostium for the aqueous to drain what has happened probably what would have gone wrong was oh, probably like fibrosis of the bleb or exactly. uh, okay. what has happened is a fibrosis okay so um, uh the subconjunctival tissue has got little fibrosed and that is why probably uh, his uh, condition is not that great what you can do how in short the question is too big for you how you manage a failed bleb and nobody is going to ask you in this ug level at all okay even for pgs they might not ask you such uh, questions too much but yeah but it the answers are very simple and um, first you can Uh, uh -huh. ma'am if the scleral the tunnel which was formed if it's too tight sometimes the drainage can be hampered so you need to okay. loosen the sutures then secondly you can do ocular massage so that the fluid can Very get good. pushed out through the and reach the bleb then we can uh -huh. use anti metabolites like mitomycin and uh, we can relieve the fibrosis swati you just told in my heart yeah <laughs> okay it is so good of you to answer this uh, very i'm very 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 delighted uh, by your answer uh kudos to you claps to her everybody 
uh, whatever she answered is to the point and correct that is one thing is uh, you can uh, do just an ocular massage okay just a digital massage by that what happens is you're creating uh, you know uh, the aqueous to you know just push through and go under the blood so you are making facilitating that otherwise if it is too tight you can do you can release certain sutures so that can be laser sutureolysis also or you can just loosen the sutures so that you know that the partial thickness flap thoda it becomes relaxed and allows the uh, aqueous to drain or else if you want to actually treat the condition which is the fibrosis you can also use uh, five fluorouracil and uh, try to bring down the fibrosis amount so all the three things what she said is correct and uh, i'm extremely happy swati uh, very 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 nice of you okay very extremely good okay so next uh, uh, obviously uh, i think we would do tonometry by by default everybody knows so uh, again tonometry i have already discussed to you that there are various kinds of tonometers uh, what we use is uh, mostly um, goldman supplementation or i mean many places uh, uh, actually when they do a glaucoma screening it's better to use an ncct that is non contact okay non contact uh, tonometers are better uh, then uh, what affects uh, the iop is my next question that is a ug question what all uh, affects your iop corneal thickness the iop uh, the corneal thickness can cause errors like if it's too thick then we may have higher yeah. iop and too thin then we may have a uh, lower very good uh, that's neha right uh, yeah neha that is absolutely right so if you have uh, whenever you are taking uh, this uh, tonometry is uh, concerned uh, it usually considers as 20 microns for the cornea okay it's it's just uh, Uh, assumes that your cornea is 520 microns or something it, it, it has a preset value uh, this is like this so i am going to calculate like this so but if uh, uh, every patient is not like that so you can have a thin cornea you can have an ectatic cornea you can have a person who is with keratoconus you can have a person who is uh, having a lot of rigidity you can have a person who is having a corneal ulcer or a corneal uh, edema which uh, which increases the thickness corneal edema will increase the thickness of the cornea okay so uh, many things can happen okay in a patient with uh, corneal problems so that that time what you are doing is not right so the corneal thickness the scleral rigidity and also as somebody said that they might squeeze the eyes might be squeezing so you trying to put something no immediately they are going to squeeze the eye okay so when the lids itself squeeze the eye again the pressure increases also it is told a person who is hypertensive might have a little high iop Mm-hmm. so a lot of factors play also the time of the uh, tonometry that you do so uh, for documentation in pgs the ideal way of documenting your tonometry is done at this time so if you are doing it at 120 in your lunch period lunch break where all your senior pgs have gone off and you are stuck alone with the opd and uh, with this patient and you are doing please write it there okay iop at 120 pm on so and so date using this tonometer all this you have to write so that uh, 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 next time when anybody sees they know what time of the day it was done whether facing has to be done everything is clear okay so make sure you properly document what what time what uh, instrument whether they were on any medication or not without any medication all these things you can write and keep so in this patient yeah we have had a 28 and 26 which is slightly on the higher side obviously correct now hmm. yes. yeah it is a higher side so uh, so now we come to the last uh, part uh, anything else there are so many things again in tonometry okay to discuss we can go hours and hours together so whatever please read up uh, about it and anything that you don't uh, really understand you can message me okay so we'll come back to the last now you uh, happy seeing everything and finally you want to dilate the patient and see so you have put the eye drops what eye drops do you put topic of my only topic am i my topic am i on local anesthetic also local yeah. anesthetic you put before tonometry before gonioscopy before all that you have to put okay local anesthetic that is nothing but proparacaine okay uh, tropic am i do you put with i am just asking do you want the you get a plain tropic am i yes i agree anything else the uh, if you worked Uh, if you've gone to your ophthalmo PD, there will be another bottle with a dark blue cap. So that's how uh, interns identify. So many this one, this one, this one. We have to put this. 
okay where's the uh, another drop which comes is a combination which is tropicamide plus phenylephrine so there's dual action there okay so please read up about tropicamide what it does and what phenylephrine does and both if you combine uh, you have a synergistic action there okay so you can put normally what we use in the ophthalmopedics is t plus that is tropicamide tropic acid plus which is with phenylephrine only if a patient uh, is uh, uh, having some cardiac defects or you suspect some cardiac abnormality or a child a small child don't we then don't usually put a phenylephrine drop then it is a plain tropicamide that is put okay so once you put that drop and you wait for the dilatation to happen this is what is being seen this is the right eye of this patient and probably this is the left eye fast fast it's almost time i mean it's almost in the right time. eye it looks like the the cup disc ratio has increased very good uh, and the uh, thinning of the uh, the ah, very good yeah very good neural yes. uh, another ah. The yes this is the nrr so to all the uh, to all our viewers the this is the cup area which is very very enlarged here so the neuroretinal rim that is the from the cup till the disc area is very less normally it shouldn't have been like that the cup should have been only this much and from here till here should have been the disc i think my arrow is being seen na so yes. if this was the cup this was the cup okay from here to here should have been the nrr but in this in this condition you are seeing that the entire uh, uh, cup is enlarged and almost thinning of the entire circumferential thinning of the entire neuroretinal rim that is one thing one more thing can you make and out the vessels have shifted yeah the vessels have shifted nasally nasalization of vessels has happened and what else and even the bayonetting sign can be appreciated okay yes there is bayonetting sign very good then i don't know if you are able to make out small dots there the lamina dot sign yeah lamina dot sign is there okay yes hema that is all, that's correct uh, lamina dot sign is present in this patient so it's a classic uh, picture that i'm showing you okay in the left hand side this is probably if we put it as a left hand uh, left eye ka image what are you seeing mm -hmm. there's some amount of notching here i'm only telling you okay because it might be very difficult for you to see there is some superior notching and can you see this this area which on a red free filter this is called as the red free filter the black and white photo with the uh, next to the fundus so in that what the arrow is pointing is certain subtle change you can see from the neighboring retina this color is slightly uh, less i mean more darker i don't know if you are appreciating it for a pg you have to okay red free filter you have to put and see and you can see the rnfl defects these are called as the retinal nerve fiber layer defects so that is corresponding to your superior notching that is present in this patient so you can write it that way um, so i'll tell you i'll tell you how the findings are again uh, for a pg when you start examining the fundus you have to tell distant direct ophthalmoscopy what did you see direct ophthalmoscopy what did you see and then come to the findings were confirmed with a plus t, a plus 90 d lens on a slit lamp uh, examination where the media was clear and the optic disc was vertically oval well defined margins cup disc ratio 0.9 in the right eye diffuse circumferential loss of nrr bayonetting laminar dot with a red free filter showing diffuse rnfl loss i can show you the right eye or uh, red free filter okay the left eye obviously there was a cd ratio about 0.7 okay uh, and uh, notching was there superiorly corresponding thinning of the nrr again in that area uh, with pp pp is nothing but uh, peripapillary atrophy okay uh, I, i really don't expect you to know all that this is for pgs this is called as peripapillary atrophy this is the disc peri uh, papillary papilla means the disc peripapillary atrophy okay so whatever you are seeing like the crescent no even the temporal crescent can be named as peripapillary atrophy okay are there the alpha and the beta zones with... yeah yeah very good very good oh my god uh, very nice we have very enlightened uh, participants today with us everybody is just telling all nice answers i am very very happy so yes okay there are alpha and beta zones which you can read okay next uh, we have uh, this thing 
uh, macula again uh, you have to really describe for a pg but uh, in this case okay and background retina has mild npda so this is your fundus picture of uh, a case okay so i think uh, uh, we've covered most of it anything you want to say yeah ma'am the red free filters is this same as the autofluorescence which we see no uh, i mean uh, 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 you can't really uh, tell that because there is uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I, yeah yeah i understood i understood what you're telling but you really can't equate it that way i will send you okay because we are really short of time now 6 5 already i will send you kunj don't worry uh, how exactly red free filter is and what is autofluorescence both of it okay uh, but yeah in the red free filter is what we put in the um, slit lamp and then check okay uh, i will i will tell you in detail so the diagnosis would be the right eye primary open angle glaucoma because okay one more thing is whenever you have a case of glaucoma you have to really rule out all the causes of secondary glaucoma first once you've ruled out everything only then you can say it as primary okay primary doesn't really have a cause oh okay so once you name it as primary then you can't go and tell it was steroid induced it was this induced it was that induced very wrong okay so uh, you have to rule out all pseudo exfoliation pigmentary traumatic uveitic uh, all causes of secondary glaucoma then only you can come and tell primary and primary is usually bilateral usually okay it might be in different grades but usually bilateral so if you are seeing a unilateral glaucoma go for a secondary some condition must have been there okay so primary open angle glaucoma status post trabeculectomy with a failed bleb with a peripheral iridectomy with pseudophakia this is how we write the findings of the right eye the left eye would be again a primary open angle glaucoma with a grade 2 nuclear sclerosis so i just hope this was not too much uh, uh, for a ug to understand because uh, you obviously are all very brilliant people and for a pg you have to be more 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 detail uh, into all of this so anything last concluding remarks 30 seconds uh, i had a doubt ma'am in that my, yeah. uh, like there's some there is a myopic crescent in uh, yeah. the yeah, yeah. myopia so how is that different from this yeah exactly so you have a, a, there, there is a picture in kanski okay so you can have a, a various ways of how you see a glaucoma uh in a patient with myopia myopic uh, uh, discs and everything so that again i'll share with you there is a, a chart okay uh, two zones are seen in glaucoma but if one zone is seen then it can be glaucoma or myopia but myopia is more common so we like very good we are having a fellowship level discussion here uh, yeah, definitely but i don't think uh, we have literally the amount of uh, uh, time here to discuss everything in detail so i will put up don't worry do you really didn't have to break your head for all of this but yeah there is a picture in kanski i think if i put that picture it will be very very clear instead of me telling 100 words a picture will speak more than 1000 words okay so i'll put that up in the group uh, so that you can know how uh, myopic crescent and myopic discs are and how this glaucoma also looks and also the alpha beta zones uh, and also about the red free filter and uh, autofluorescence uh okay any other uh, uh, question in the chat please record it and send me um uh, priya or ashna anyone so i think we are done for the day there there is one more session coming up at 6:30 please do watch it uh okay sayonara thank you so much ma'am thank, thank you so much ma'am ma yeah i did it was it too much that that's the only thing that i'm bothered now was it too much for you guys uh no. or did you oh, ma'am no ma'am it was really nice it was really yes ma'am learned a lot of interesting thank you thank you because you've been reading i find all the ugs reading 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 and i thought it was a good uh, way of putting in a patient and what exactly is done so that when you go back and read you can relate actually like a patient coming and what you all seeing and then how you're going to treat him how it is going to be like so then it becomes a permanent memory for you so please go back and read up and any queries anything you can write to me on uh, ramyarnadig@gmail.com uh, so i am very hopeful that we bit in pressure uh, from the two classes will subside and right now uh, even though uh, i really don't want you guys to be like this in glaucoma <laughs> or in coma please get back to normal please stay safe stay happy see ya thank, thank you. you so much ma'am it was indeed a comprehensive